From the vast steppes of Mongolia, a force emerged that would change the world forever. A leader both ruthless in battle and visionary in governance carved an empire larger than any before. Who was this man, and how did he achieve such monumental feats? Dive deep into the extraordinary life and legacy of Genghis Khan, as we unravel the myths, battles and strategies that made him legendary. Stay tuned and embark on an epic journey through history like no other. Before we start, I want to thank you for your support. You who like the videos and comments are the ones who help the channel to grow and continue to provide you with exciting stories about the greatest rulers. Thank you for being with us. Let's begin. Temujin was born in 1162 in the region now known as Mongolia, deep in the steppes of northeastern Asia. Legend has it that he was born clutching a blood clot in his hand, a sign believed to foreshadow great accomplishments. Temujin's early years were challenging. After the death of his father, the family was abandoned by their clan, leaving them vulnerable to the harsh wilderness and potential enemies. During his teenage years, Temujin began to amass his army, uniting small groups of outcasts and marginalized individuals. Despite his youth, he exhibited exceptional military and leadership skills. Temujin's main strategy was to unify the fragmented Mongolian tribes. He believed that only by uniting could the Mongols become a significant force in the region. Temujin's individual military campaigns before becoming Genghis Khan were numerous. He battled against tribes like the Merkits, Naimans and Tatars. In each of these battles, Temujin employed strategies based on reconnaissance, surprise and maneuverability. In the battle against the Merkits, for instance, Temujin utilized surprise night attacks and misinformation to crush his enemy. Against the Naimans, he capitalized on their divided forces, luring them into an ambush and delivering a devastating blow. His reputation grew not just because of his military successes, but also due to the way he treated prisoners and new subjects. Instead of exterminating them, he often integrated them into his ranks, or offered them a new life within the unified Mongolian society. A pivotal moment in his unification campaign was forming an alliance with his childhood friend Jamuka and the powerful leader Wang Khan. This alliance was instrumental in his early conquests, although it would later turn into conflict as Jamuka and Temujin became rivals. In 1206, after a series of successful campaigns and with vastly expanded territory under his control, Temujin was proclaimed Genghis Khan, the Great Khan of all Mongolian tribes. This moment marked the culmination of his efforts to unite the Mongols under a single leadership. At this point in his life, Genghis Khan was not merely a military leader. He became a symbol of the unified Mongolian society, aiming for a grand future. After uniting the Mongolian tribes, Genghis Khan set his sights on territories beyond contemporary Mongolia. He devised ambitious conquest plans that would make him one of the world's greatest conquerors. One of the most remarkable campaigns was against the Khwarezmian Empire, a powerful state that controlled territories from Central Asia to Persia. When the Khwarezm Shah killed a Mongolian trade caravan, Genghis Khan decided to retaliate. The Battle of Nishapur stands out as perhaps the most significant of this campaign. In 1221, after a siege, Mongol forces captured the city. Genghis Khan ordered a massive slaughter in retaliation for the death of one of his sons-in-law during the siege. Legends tell of hundreds of thousands killed as the city was razed to the ground. Genghis Khan's battle strategy often relied on the mobility of the Mongolian cavalry and the use of long-range bows. He was also a master of psychological warfare, using misinformation and surprise tactics to demoralize his enemies. After solidifying his positions in Central Asia, Genghis Khan moved on to China. He successfully conquered the Jin dynasty, laying the foundation for Mongol rule over Chinese territories, which would be fortified and expanded by his successors. He also launched campaigns against the Caucasus and Persia, successfully annexing large parts of these regions under Mongol rule. Beyond his military achievements, Genghis Khan was known for his efforts to structure and govern the newly formed empire. He introduced laws called Yasa, 
which regulated everything from personal hygiene to prisoners' rights. In 1227, Genghis Khan died under mysterious circumstances. Some historians believe he was killed in battle, while others speculate he fell from his horse. Regardless of the cause, his death marked the end of one era, but the beginning of another, an era of Mongol dominance. The empire he left behind was the largest in terms of land area in world history. It stretched from China through Central Asia to Europe, leaving not just traces of destruction and conquest, but also fostering cultural and trade exchanges that changed the face of the old world. Genghis Khan's legacy is dual. While many see him as a bloodthirsty conqueror, others respect him as a great reformer and governance genius who altered history with the grandeur of his achievements. Thank you for watching until the end. Don't forget to subscribe to ensure you have access to the upcoming Great Rulers videos.